before a Euro 2012 qualifier Tuesday, Serbian fans ambushed the Serbian team. Threw flares at them. The violence was apparently a coordinated effort against goalkeeper Vladimir Stojkovic, who recently switched club teams. Fans began cutting through protective nets once they were inside, smashed plexiglass, threw fireworks onto the pitch, nearly hitting some of the players. The match lasted just six minutes before the game was abandoned. I mean, that is just not cool. If you're going to throw something, make it useful. Like the O. Henry bars they used to throw onto the field at the Big O for Henry Rodriguez in Montreal. I miss that. <laughs> I didn't miss it that much. Here are the top ten thrown objects. The O. Henrys are at number eight. After Jeff Cowan netted this one, a Canuck fan decided to throw a bra on the ice. It must have been a nice goal. Nice. I like to see that. The game needs that, right? After receiving promotional baseballs, the Brewer fans began to litter the field with them, prompting the umps to pull both teams off the field, delaying the game. Milwaukee manager Phil Garner wasn't pleased with the fans. We urge you for the safety of the players, the umpires, and your fellow fans do not throw any more baseballs on the field. In 1996, Expo outfielder Henry Rodriguez hit a career-high 36 homers, and fans in Montreal celebrated with a little chocolate. That's going to be gone. Look out, here come the old Henry bars. A tradition that was welcomed by opponents, right, Derek? In 1995, with the New York Giants mired in a 5-11 season, a meaningless Week 17 game against the Chargers turned into a giant snowball fight. 175 fans were ejected, 15 were arrested, and we assume these nuts were two of them. Checkered flag waves on Jeff Gordon. Well, I guess the fans didn't listen to Junebug, because you see a lot of debris flying on the racetrack. I just didn't think we'd get 77 here, and I don't think, I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, didn't want us to. The Cape Breton Oilers took on the Portland Pirates on Frisbee night. After the Oilers grabbed the lead, the Pirate fans showed their displeasure by, yes, throwing the Frisbees on the ice. We have uh, some fog that has developed here. The Devils were, were actually uh, waving towels at their bench to try to cause it to lift. Oh, the smoke bomb. Is that what it was? Yeah. I don't know. I've never you ever seen that yeah. before. That's a new one. It is about as pungent as anything I've smelled in any <laughs> arena. In the final week of the 2001 NFL season, the dog pound in Cleveland showed its bite after this call. After review, the pass is incomplete. First, first down, Jacksonville. Wow. Fortunately, those bottles are plastic. And now they're going to call that it is the end of the game. Unbelievable. You're only hurting yourself by throwing stuff on the field. And this is a three-on-one for New Jersey. Marshall to Madden. Patrick John Madden. A howitzer that triggers the shower of hats. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they work so hard. They're playing. I got to give it up. I got, you know, it was a hat trick. And I only thing I had was my hair. And it came Who loose. says North Jersey is unfriendly? The hat came back, or the hair came back in this case. And they did, actually. They brought it back to me. I threw it out on the ice. They brought it back to me. In October of 95, Panthers captain Scott Mellenby took care of a rat that found its way into the locker room. And that set off one of the strangest traditions in sport, which eventually reached its peak during the Panthers' magical run to the Stanley Cup final. Here we go again. You know what has happened out there on the ice surface. This is going to take a bit to clean it up. And the rats are feasting here in Miami at the moment. Sports Center Top 10 is brought to you by Glacier Fresh Kokanee. It's all about now. Next, the highlight of the night. I uh, just happened to find the O. Henry that was thrown at my head earlier in the program. A very underrated chocolate bar. It certainly is, Dan. It's a tasty treat. It's got peanuts, fudge, caramel, and it's covered in a chocolatey coating. How could it not be good? Enjoy one for breakfast right now while you watch The Morning Loop. The 
following is available in high definition. Oh. And down goes Orr. He got tagged with the right hand. This is Sports Center. So far, so good.